So today's topic is edges, because um, that's an issue, right, for everybody. Even mm -hmm. like even career painters have trouble with edges, um, and uh, and uh, I'll show you. Okay. Let's flip over to better audio. Too. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah. So like when you're drawing in the early stages, right? You're drawing like something in a still life, and say you're gonna do like the black cube. And then, um, you're gonna put that on the gray one or whatever. So in your early stages, they, uh, you're working with the outline because the outline is kind of what you have. But really, remember, we're drawing through the forms, so you're working with the actual factual reality of it. And then you block in. And for a full value study, you want to, you know, carry value out to all edges of the paper. So, the problem is, is if you now go back and then start outlining again, you're going to run into trouble, right? Um, because you'll hate, you'll hate your outline later, and the outlines kind of kill depth. So, an outline is something, is a tool that you use at the very, very end stages of the drawing just where you need it to define form. But in reality, what defines one form is a shift in value, right? So this plane is different from this one because I'm gonna change the value, right? And so early on, what I'll do is I'll draw right over the edge where that corner is. But you know how like when you have one dark side and one like lighter side, mm -hmm. if it's like really different like that, doesn't it look kind of goofy when it's one side's really dark and one's really light? It doesn't really blend well. It well, strange. it what's your yeah, yeah, yeah. It, shows, it shows it shows the form. It, it depends on the edge and it depends on the distance from value to value, right? Yeah. So here, um, squinting your eyes, the value shift isn't very big from one to the other, from this this side to this side. But the value shift from this to that is pretty huge, right? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So this, I want to get dark. Remember on our value scale, you have the, the 10 to 0. 10 being darkest, 0 being lightest. So within this little realm, you know, like this would be like an 8. Right? So I want to take... so. I'm gonna take this down to, to eight as quickly as possible, right? Without ever really committing to an edge. Whatever marks you wanna to make to get there, that's up to you. Okay, now I'm approaching, approaching sort of a 6-7 now. So I'd keep working this a little longer. And then next to it is probably like a 6.5, right? Because so, the value shift isn't huge. So I'd want to just go ahead and get that knocked down. So you remember the rule from last time? About plane shifts and value shifts. Remember? But if there is any plane shift that there is a value shift? Exactly, yeah. So if there's a plane shift, there's a value shift. If there's a value shift, there's a plane shift, right? So if you see on your object that you know that there's a change in plane, you know in your drawing that there has to be a change in value. And so 
this edge right here becomes increasingly important, right? So how do I handle that edge? Right now you can tell that there's a valley shift, so there's a plane shift, right? So um, what I can kind of do is start working on this, this edge, cleaning this edge up. And I don't want it to be too sharp or too soft. Right now it's pretty soft, the edge. So I want to increase its visibility because it's a pretty harsh cube, right? Now, if I go too many times with that direction, then I'm going to re start reinforcing the outline rather than increasing the effectiveness of the edge. So I want to be sure to draw like counter to the direction of the edge. See that? So then what I need to do is come back on the other side of the of the edge and just get a little control over how that value meets. Right? And then what I want to make sure is that this edge value is, you know, if there's no progression to make sure that it carries out all the way over to this side. So when you're drawing, at first, you want to um, make sure that you uh, draw over the edge of the forms. You know what I'm saying? So, because I'm carrying, like the edge is right here, but I'm drawing over it. So that gives you the ability to control where the edge is exactly, you know? Um, so under this plane right here. So it looks messy, right? And it'll look messy for a long time until you, at the end, once you establish the general values for everything, um, then it looks really good. It's like pretty much any project looks like a total mess until like the last 15 minutes and that's where everything like locks together so what you want to develop is the eye for whether that last 15 minutes is going to turn out well <laughs> you know because um, right now you don't quite know yet and basically that just go comes from following the process a million times and then you eventually kind of get it So what you do here is just establish the relative values for each one. So I know that this is probably going to go darker, this is going to go darker, this would go darker, and this would even go darker. But what I want to do is set up the same relative uh, value range for it. This one right here? It's because I haven't touched the shadow yet. Which one are you talking about? So I have an odd effect that this is ref this is reflective, so this this is actually going to be pretty light. Which point? I was saying it looks like this is same blue as that. Mhm. Mm yeah, this is a little darker on the actual object, right? The cast shadow. And the cast shadow is very very close to this value right here. It looks like the cast shadow is just a bit darker though. So that's where that idea of pushing values comes in. So I need room for this value. So what I have to do is push this down to where it should be, push this down, push this down, right? Um, because it's all about kind of making room. So now I need this edge to come out So now this starts to read as a cast shadow, right? That little bit of overhang. Okay, now watch what happens if I get too sharp with it, right? Still not outlining, I'm just getting real, real sharp with this edge.
sometimes that can work, right? It's starting to work there, but if it gets too sharp, it, it you can't tell which one is in front and which one is behind, right? Like if this edge right here gets really, really sharp, it starts to, you start to wonder whether if you look at just this little square inch, whether this is foreground or this is foreground. You don't know. It causes a figure ground reversal, right? So then what I can do if I don't like this location of the edge is I can play back and forth, right? By just erasing over the whole edge and then replacing a new, with a new edge. So you can work back and forth, over and through. And that keeps you in non-committal stages for a while. There we go. So if I lose the edge in some places and let it blend out, and I pick it back and up, pick pick it back in other spots, then it's fine. It becomes more interesting. So like down here, if I want to say sharpen up this outline. Maybe sharpen up this one. So if I have an outline, what I can do is I can just make the value of that plane the same as the value of the outline, right? And that can be a way to kill the outline. So what I want you to do is decrease your dependence on outline to, to define an object and start increasing your dependence on value to do it. And then at the very, very end, when you're done with all the values, then in like three or four little spots where you just want to, say, bring something forward, you can just do a little outline like that. But what I don't want to see is like an evenly line-weighted outline over every little thing. Because that, you know, it's a cool cartoon effect, but not really useful for drawing. So when you do outlines, you want to use line weight concept, right? So heavy weight to thin. So if I were to outline what I could do is theoretically I could start with heavy, go to thin, then the same object. So that it wouldn't so that it at least gives me something interesting to look at. So if you're gonna use outline, use it in that way in choice areas. And outlines like that, they can actually serve to, to sort of ground an object to the, to the bottom, where you have those, that little mini shadow under the box where it doesn't quite line up with the surface. Okay, does that make sense? You see it? Cool, that's the new concept for today. I think that's it.